a neon-soaked future mega, mega city, there was one day everyone remembered the day a cyber attack stopped stealing secrets and started shattering steel. The day code became a weapon you could hear, feel, and bleed from. The alarm started with a whisper. Deep under the streets of Neona Tens, inside a buried enrichment complex wrapped in concrete, Farid watched rows of virtual gauges glow a calm, steady green, air-gapped, untouchable. That was the myth they were paid to believe. Through reinforced glass windows, we see a vast hall filled with towering centrifuge columns, sleek metallic spires that stretch toward the ceiling. They spin with hypnotic precision, their surfaces reflecting the ambient blue and green lighting. Steam and particle effects suggest the intense industrial process occurring within. The camera slowly tracks along the glass, emphasizing the scale and power of the machinery. Behind the glass, columns of centrifuges, tall silver spines of metal spun at murderous speeds, separating fuel that would rewrite the balance of power in a fractured world. But in the shadows of the city above, someone had already written a different story, compressed into half a megabyte of weaponized code, waiting for a way in. The worm didn't care about passwords or pay grades. It didn't loot bank accounts or ransom files. It watched. It mapped every shiver of every rotor, every heartbeat of the process, learning the rhythm like a predator stalking prey. Then one night it struck, nudging the centrifuges to spin too fast, then too slow, pushing metal past its limits while feeding the control room a perfect simulation of normal. On Farid's uh, screens, the plant looked healthy. In the hall beyond, machines screamed. This bunker wasn't online. No fiber, no wireless, no satellite, just concrete steel and human arrogance. The worm rode past all of it inside a cheap, unmarked USB jammed into a port by a tired contractor who just wanted to load and update and go home. From that single act, the malware flowed through the network like poison through veins, hunting the exact Siemens controllers that kept the rotors alive. Days later, the city felt it before anyone understood it. Replacement parts surged through smuggler routes. Freight drones moved under curfew. Inside the complex, over a thousand centrifuges were crippled or quietly dismantled. Their failures written off as mechanical fatigue no one could explain. War rooms across the world with officials in sharp suits around holographic displays, all showing clean logs and denial protocols. The camera reveals broken aluminum centrifuge parts as evidence of physical damage. On-screen text appears cyber, physical security teams found no obvious intrusion. Dashboards showed clean logs, and in neon-lit war rooms on the other side of the world, officials in sharp suits denied everything. But the truth was carved into broken aluminum. Cyber attacks could now break bones in the physical world. In the years that followed, the story of that worm became ghost code in every serious operator's mind. It proved that air gap was a fairy tale, that screens could be forged, sensors lied to, and the most dangerous vulnerability was still a human hand holding the wrong drive. Defenders stopped asking only how to keep intruders out and started asking a darker question. If something inside turns against us, how does this system fail? That was the day cyber war grew up, and from that moment on, every spinning machine in the city had a new enemy, its own invisible reflection.